Welcome to the only place where real, raw, and vulnerable conversations happen with IFBB Bikini Pros to give you an inside look at their struggles, strategies, mindset, passions, and all of life beyond the stage. This podcast is made to inspire, motivate, and remind competitors and the average gym goer that even the most extreme lifestyles and elite athletes have their ups and downs. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm your host, Celeste Rains turk and now it's time for the Confessions of a Bikini Pro podcast. Before we dive into this episode, I have to tell you guys about the Shoe Fairy's newest heels. They recently released a brand new line of original heels called the Olympian 2.0s, and they are meant for everyone, not just competitors. Now, these heels feature a brand new structure, which doesn't even feel like a heel. I've tried them. They're amazing. And what sets them apart is that they are a four and a half inch heel and they have a three quarter inch platform. They are super comfortable, very easy to pose in, and you can even wear them out. I know I generally wear my shoe fairy heels out and about if I'm getting dressed up and these are a game changer. I actually went with the strappies myself and I've never worn a heel without an ankle strap and man they felt so amazing and i'm excited to keep practicing in them all improvement season because we know how it is when you're waiting backstage you don't want to be on your feet so long and then add on top of that heels as well and i am very much looking forward to seeing how these strappies continue to feel but let me just say the comfort level is incredible and i still love the original olympians that i have but these are definitely a 2.0 leveled up version so you can check them out by going to www.shoefairyofficial.com and select the Olympian 2.0 tab to shop all three styles because they don't just have the strappy but they have one with an angle strap and then they have one that's like a mule and then when you get there you can save 10% on your order with the code Celeste which is awesome so that shows support for me and the show and it saves you money which I greatly appreciate and love doing for you guys so now let's get into the episode Today, we will be speaking with a pro physiques coach and athlete who has been working as a teacher for 34 years, as well as a college and high school basketball coach who started competing in 2015, right after after she turned 50 years old and went on to earn her pro card in 2018 at Masters Nationals. This woman is awesome i can already tell i've had fun talking with her before we hit record we're going to be meeting each other next week which will be at the olympia much longer after um once you guys hear this it'll be a long time since then so i'm sure we'll have fun stories to expand on after the fact but i want to welcome to the show miriam jenkins how are you doing i'm doing awesome thank you so much for this opportunity yeah of course i'm so happy to have you on because you know, we do have a lot to look forward to, and I'm grateful you decided to come on, even though you're not feeling your best. <laughs> a little cold, but we shall overcome. Yes, absolutely. Now, before we get into everything, I always like to start by asking if you have a ritual or something you think about or do right before your heel hits the stage. Well, I always stretch. Mm. And I always pray before I hit the stage. And the next huge priority, go to the bathroom. <laughs> if you can. <laughs> if you can, if you can. But I'm drinking water, not a whole bunch, but enough that the nervous pee, it's really the nervous pee. It's yes. not even I have to pee. It's just the nervous pee. I get the nervous pee too. Sometimes, sometimes the nervous, you know what, as well, but... <laughs> 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 and I love um, music and whatever's playing. I love to feel that music. It doesn't oh, matter what yeah. kind of music it is. Cause I, I feel like I've been around long enough, you know, 57 years. I know a lot of music and it doesn't matter what genre it is. Ooh. So you'll just turn on whatever you're feeling that day. Yes. And you know, what's interesting is uh, people always ask me, do you know what song is playing when you're um, on stage? I have no idea. Right? Not um, until the video is sent to me. Yeah, and then until I'm the like, video oh. is sent. Yeah, I have no idea. I just tell the DJ, play something good. <laughs> you know, it was funny at North, was it North Americans? I think it was North American. Shoot. Now I'm like, Blake. no, it was. 
we all like went up on stage and then they had us stand in like a triangle where it was like one person in the front, then the next one, and then the third. So it was almost like we were lined up on stage and then they did the individual and we moved to the different spot in the triangle. And that was the one time I felt like I was actually listening to the music while on stage. But then after I got off, I was like, I don't remember anything. I don't know. I mean, I, yeah. I usually know how like the floor feels and the lights feel and like how I felt, but I don't recall the sounds. Right. I know. Isn't that strange? But I mean, because you, you figure, I, I don't know about you, but I have something already in my head. Yeah. You know, a song already planned. It's usually something like Beyonce, Sierra, Jennifer Lopez, something like that. It's already there. So totally. I think that's why when I go on stage, I don't know what the song is. Yeah, that makes sense. I've had different songs for different seasons and shows, and sometimes it turns on in my head, and sometimes it just goes blank. Blank. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, yep. it's so cool that you are doing this and you got into this at 50. So, of course, I want to know, why did you decide to compete? Well, you know, I wanted to do this when I was younger because I loved oh. Gladys Portuguese, um, Carla Dunlap. Um, I loved those athletes and, and they were bodybuilders, mm. but they looked feminine still. Yeah, but I just couldn't stick to the diet, chicken, fish, turkey, rice, broccoli. And now I'm as a flexible dieter. I don't have to. St I eat popcorn every day. Yeah. So I don't have to stick to that meal plan, which has allowed me to have some longevity, I think. Oh, because when I first. Yeah, when I first started in 2015, I was on the old school bodybuilder diet mm -hmm. for three years and it worked. It works. It does work. But after a while, your body is like, yeah, I'm done. What else can you do? Give me something else. Well, and, and it was you kind of get me. sensitive to like other foods then or like you become sensitive to those foods because you just eat it so much that then it's almost yes. seems harder on the body. Yes. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. So I'm glad you were able to find flexible dieting. And that obviously explains your work with pro physiques, but you did say, and we'll get into that, but you did say that you were living more of like the bro diet approach. So yeah. how long were you, I mean, I assume you were an athlete majority of your life, given your coaching background. Is that right? I played high school and college basketball. And in high school, I went to a whole <clears throat> excuse me, a small high school in Alaska, Juneau, and mm. I played every sport, track, cross country, softball, um, volleyball, you know, I, I, I did everything because there was nothing else to do. <laughs> and I didn't want to be at home. So I played every sport. I just got good, really good at basketball. And I just continued to play. Amazing. Now, I don't want to pressure you to answer this question, but you said that you didn't want to be at home. Was there just, was there a reason for that? Well, my parents got divorced when I was 14 and, you know, there was just a lot of negativity and I felt relaxed and at, at ease, mm -hmm. at, you know, playing basketball, being in the gym, um, being with my friends and people with positive attitudes. I just like that setting, in which I still am the same way. Yeah, you know, I still like, like that. that positive vibe, that feeling you get when you walk in the gym. Everybody's got the same goal. Nobody's in there, you know. I mean, we have now people with the cell phones sitting on the weights, but mm. they're there to have a few games. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's so true. I love the gym community. I love the bodybuilding community. It's really amazing and coming from a sports background even though you transition to something like bodybuilding where it, a lot of the work is done on an individual basis there is so much value in the community effort the friendships developed and I think that's something I've noticed about you is you really value the the community and the friendship I really do I go to shows with my friend Wendy um, and we just go to shows to go to shows just to see people and to cheer as loud as we can. Oh, I love that. 
that? Why, why do you do that? Like, why do you think that's important? I think women supporting women is a huge mm-hmm. thing. Cause I feel like I didn't get any of that, you know? And I, you know, I feel like that's just, it's something I feel that allows me to release, you know, positivity. Cause I'm around kids all day. Plus I get to be around grown people, which is kind of nice, <laughs> but I just love watching people be successful. I just love that part. You know, wow. it's like, wow, look at how great she looks. Look at how good she's doing. Yes. And I just love that part of it. Truly, it's so amazing. That's a big reason why I do this podcast is to shine light on the incredible women in this sport and and show like there's so much more to us than the physique. And it's awesome to hear all these stories. And then when you go to shows and you're witnessing people step on stage and you know, you know, the work that had to go into that. And there's a lot of value in, in cheering someone on, especially when you don't know if, if they even have support, because a lot of them probably don't. Right. Because what, what I've found is your friendships change when you get to this sport, because it is kind of a selfish sport. You're, you, you shift of partying, may, maybe partying, going out drinking, going out to eat all the time. So your, your priorities shift and not everybody is on board with that. And exactly. it's hard to get people to understand trying to explain it unless you're around people who already do it and they understand and feel otherwise the pain and suffering or the excitement depending on what part, what phase you're in Mm -hmm. of the bodybuilding phase. Absolutely. Yeah, it's true. A lot of our approach to life might change when we enter this sport. And if we're surrounded by people who don't understand or at least respect our desires to pursue it, it can feel a lot more lonely. And then you start going, you know, to shows and you're backstage, you're watching them and you realize, oh, that, that person in the crowd's eating out of Tupperware or oh that person backstage also had to do x amount of cardio or wow we all are talking about how much we love watching this show on Netflix or just chilling in this way like it's really cool because you you're obviously then in a place where a lot of people similar to you with similar values end up being as well right and I think that's kind of how life is just in general but as you change your your values, your group of friends, group of people, your circle changes. Mm. Did that happen um, for you? Definitely, definitely. I I have a different group of friends. I associate with different people. I still see my friends because I used to travel a lot, which I still do. Mm -hmm. But I travel with a group of ladies and I don't travel with them anymore. But we've all changed. Some of them got married. Some of them had kids. So even their priorities have changed. So it's not just me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yes. so we, we get together once in a while, but not like every weekend like we used to. Totally. And I find sometimes it's easier for me to make plans with fellow friends who live this lifestyle because I can just be like you want to go on a walk or get coffee or chill like the little things like that versus it oh we got to find a brunch spot I got to go out to dinner you want to go to a club none of that's ever interested me so it's not going to interest me now yeah and I think I've changed a lot uh, because I know I used to love to go out dancing I still like to dance but I used to love to go out to dance and now I (laughs) Now I come home, I'm like, do I, if I go out, people are going to ask me, hey, I like your arms. How did you get that? (laughs) And then they're going to ask me questions, even though I'm probably 90% sure they're, whatever I say, they're really not going to adhere to. True. And that's, that's the part that I get bummed about, you know, because I want to go, but then I don't want to have to answer 50 questions about how did you get like that? What, what diet are you on? I want to be on that diet. And so that sometimes hinders me going certain places. That's understandable for sure. Especially when we, majority of us know that those people asking are not in the phase of change where they're ready to take action (laughs) they're just right curious it's a conversation piece which sometimes it is pretty cool but 
it can be exhausting if they're asking for advice and you know it's a kind of a waste of breath. You could tell them to do the most ridiculous thing at that point. It wouldn't even matter. They won't do it. <laughs> exactly. That's <laughs> funny. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you're like I just uh I just do whatever I feel like doing they, they'd be like oh I don't I don't understand but you know I do think too when you when you commit to this lifestyle it can positively impact a lot of people in your life and especially around your age I was wondering if there's other women who have seen you who are around your age and been maybe inspired or have been positively impacted by the things you've shared or maybe you've witnessed a change in in others because of how you live and show up and I have, especially a lot of the the women I um, are friends with at the gym. And a lot of them, they would come once a week, maybe twice. Now I see them every day. If oh. I'm on a cardio machine, they'll come by and say, girl, you are motivation. I'm getting ready to do my cardio too. So that really is a, a, a positive outlook. I love that part too. Cause I, you know, you, sometimes you don't even know you make an impact until months later when yeah. they see you change and then they'll come to you and say, I've been watching you for the last three months. Cause that happened um, earlier this year, this one lady, I guess she finally came up to, to talk to me. She says, well, I just turned 60 and I've been watching you for the last four months. And I was like, four months that's amazing you know I didn't even know and now she talks to me every day oh so and she she goes when you come back from th Christmas break we're going to get together and I so I know now because she's been constantly talking to me so I know she's a little more serious yeah see that's something that is also really cool is we sometimes don't even know who we're making an impact on until one day they say to us, like, I, I've been seeing you coming in here, putting in the work, you inspire me. And you're like, uh, what? Like, that's amazing. You know, it's just, it, honestly, sometimes people think in order to be inspiring, you got to like be a certain way and say these things. But so many right. of us are just inspiring for showing up every day, you know? Yep. And that was, I think, one of the things that she really honed in on it was you're here every day at 5 a.m mm. I said yes ma'am I said that back to the thing you were talking about about routines I think it's just a huge thing and I try to teach my students this build yourself a routine if you forget something every day remember to put it by the door before you go to bed if you want to eat breakfast cook it the night before then you don't have to worry about running around in the morning looking for something to eat and then end up eating the school lunch, which you say tastes terrible. <laughs> I loved the school lunch personally. <laughs> I see. I, I and see my kids get it free. And that's why I told them, I said, you're getting lunch free. So yeah, exactly. You can't, you can't beat that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Even though it's not 100% good, you know, you're getting free breakfast. Right. Yes. Well, you know, I'm glad you brought up your work because I was actually hope and, and routine because I wanted to hear what a normal day looks like for you because you're teaching, you're an athletic director, you coach for sports, you're obviously a competitor, you're traveling, um, you also coach competitors. So what's a normal day like for you? Well, shoot, I wake up every day <laughs> at four. <laughs> And once I put my contacts in and I can see, <laughs> I stretch. I do stretch every morning for about 10 minutes. Mm. So that's kind of my meat. Well, actually, let me back up. After I wake up, I do pray. And I also read a scripture every single day before I stretch. And I review my goals every morning. I do review my goals every morning and I have them written on my phone. So when the alarm goes off, I put my watch on and I review my goals. Then I read my scripture and I pray and then I stretch. <laughs> mm. So, Love and that. then, yeah, and that's by 4.30 ish. I'm actually journaling at 4.30 um, based on the scripture that I read. So like two or three sentences while I'm eating my pre-workout meal. And then I go, I'm at the gym at five o'clock. I live 10 minutes away. It's not that far. 
So, um, and now I'm teaching at a school that's 10 minutes away from my house. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier for me to get to school from the gym. Yes. So, but I do train every day, uh, except for um, Wednesdays and Sundays um, from five to, to 6.30. And then I actually walk the school parking lot mm. from 6.30 to seven. Because, you know, I'm at some, well, I don't sit at a desk, but a lot of times I used to sit at a desk so that I would walk to get steps in because I knew I'd be sitting at a desk. Oh. But now that I teach um, weightlifting six periods a day, there's not much sitting going on. Wow, you teach weightlifting? I teach weightlifting. That's cool. So is this an elective? It's an elective. And the kids have to take oh a credit and a half of an elective. And so a lot of the boys and the football players take weightlifting. So I only have, I mostly have boys. Hmm. So, yeah, a good way to well, start the day. We need some yeah. estrogen up in there. Well, you know, we're working on that. It's so hard because the, the district says we can't say it's girls weightlifting only. So you okay. have to put them with the boys, but they don't want to be with the boys. Well, yeah, it's such an awkward time for the boys and the girls. It is. It is. The boys are goofy. The girls are shy. But mm -hmm. I do have um, one girl in first period, one in third period, one uh, two in third period, one in fifth period, one in sixth period, and I have four in seventh period. So I have a, maybe 10 girls total out of the 260 kids I got. It's awesome. At least you got some and it wasn't a zero. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome for those girls because more power to them that they're showing up. And I think... Um, it's really special. They probably feel really, really lucky to have you teaching them because they see an example. The, you know, what's interesting is the girls aren't as excited as the boys are. It's <laughs> when I would come back with a, a, a medal, a trophy, a fake check, they would be like, what? And they'd be cheering so loud. They'd be so happy, you know, and then they would go, where are the treats? <laughs> <laughs> so they know so about your life as a bodybuilder they do they do they do that's really cool and how do your colleagues feel about it um a, a few of them have asked me to help them train and change their nutrition mm -hmm. and so I'm hoping that that happens you know it's kind of like going to that club that party where people ask you a lot of questions and you're not sure if they're gonna do it or not yeah so, but I have a, a, a weight room and I'm going to actually open it up to just adults one day a week oh. so that the faculty and staff can come in with no kids. Love that. That's so cool. Like open gym. Yes. Yes. That's amazing. And I imagine your lifestyle as a competitor probably influences your approach to coaching the youth and and any of the sports that you coach really. So how have you, or maybe maybe it hasn't, but how have you noticed it impact the way you do approach coaching? Well, I, I find that I'm a little more routine-y with the kids mm -hmm. and I'm, I, I tend to pay more attention to the form and the specificity of it all. When I was younger, I didn't pay that much attention to it as much because I was teaching health and then I would teach basketball class and I would teach volleyball class. So I had so many random things. Now it's a little more, um, what do you call it? I do only two things. I teach weightlifting and I teach health. So I have two specific things that I'm doing and the kids really like to lift. Yeah. So if I build them a routine, I notice if I build the routine, they're better than if I give them free reign of the routine. Mm. So they really do like the, um, the routine of it. How many sets are we going to do? Which weights are we going to do? How, what exercises? When I give them a little more leeway, they don't like that. 
which I think is interesting. You would think they would want to be free to do whatever they want, but they'd rather me pick the exercises. Yeah. I and I noticed that, that with most clients, even clients too, I, yeah. I'm the same way. I like coach Paul to design me a program, even though I know how to do it myself, I would much rather have him design my plan than me do it. Totally. Yeah. I'm the same. Like it, coaches need coaches, you know, and I don't, I don't do training or nutrition coaching anymore or anything like that. But when I was, I was like, coaches still need coaches. And I think no matter how far along you get in this sport, it's good to have another professional involved or someone's eyes on you or making sure you're supported, especially with how busy you are. And you're always programming for everyone else. It's like, it's nice to just, oh, okay. Check-ins are done with my coach and I already know what's next. Yep. I, I, I like it goes for me. It makes my day smoother. Like I have check in tomorrow on Friday and I just checked in yesterday, but I was a little sore and my weight had went up. So coach Paul was like, let's check in on Friday, cut your cardio down. Let's see if something changes. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, and you were just telling me before we started recording that you had been doing like little mini cuts. So how long were you in your uh, how long had it been since you last competed again? Uh, October 1st, I did five or six shows this year. Ooh. That's amazing. Five or six. And um, I stopped the week before my birthday because I wanted to enjoy my birthday. I mean, I would have anyway, but mm-hmm. I wanted to not have to be thinking, oh, man, in three weeks, I got to diet back down and blah, blah, blah. So I decided to end it there, even though I probably could have done Atlantic Coast or, I mean, not Atlantic Coast, Hurricane Pro. Yeah, that and, would have been-, and been okay with that. That's like the end of October or Baltimore Pro. But it was like, do I want to diet for three or four more weeks? Uh, I've been dieting since March. So sometimes that affects what I do next. Yeah, so absolutely. I did. But yeah, I did six, five or six shows, and my last show was October 1st. So, and I'm not far off of my stage weight, like four pounds, three pounds, three pounds wow. off of stage weight. So, That's so I've been maintaining good. pretty good for what, almost two months. Yeah. That's awesome. And do you, do you have your food going up as well? Food was going up until I started this little mini cut. It was going up. <laughs> <laughs> and it stopped. <laughs> and it said, <laughs> but and I'm going on vacation, so it's gonna be up a little bit. And you know, I'm going with my best friend Wendy, and so she'll she's a, a competitor, so we'll both be like, okay, we've had enough. Time to tighten it up. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And what Keep are each you other guys- accountable? So you're going on vacation with Wendy, who's a bodybuilder friend. Yes, yes. How does vacation look with a fellow competitor? Like, do you guys just live your normal lifestyles? Do you let loose a bit? Um, There's a little bit of freedom, but we're both um, very particular about how we look. So we don't go ham, you know? Um, We've already planned out, you know, our, which is really sad. (laughs) The specific restaurants we're going to on which days so that we can focus. We decided on what days we're going to train and what days we're going to go off and do, you know, different things. So we still kind of stay focused. I'll be honest. We we do. I love that. Honestly, I feel like that's, that's just, it's this, this is a lifestyle. If we can't sustain or we don't even want to when we go on vacation it's it's weird it almost just becomes habitual and then you just like okay you're on vacation or you go out somewhere like let it go a little bit but at that point especially when you track macros too it makes it very easy to to maintain that commitment yes and even with my friend who's a figure competitor like we eat breakfast every day after we pose and um, she goes, I'm, I'm thinking we should make this, this, and this. I said, shoot me the macros, and I can tell you if I can make it work. That's awesome. So that's, 
you know, we've been making pancakes the last couple of weeks. I mm. love pancakes, but That's you know, good. they're, they're protein pancakes or they're pancakes that are, that have some protein in them. Yep. So. Absolutely. Um, I, th yes, I love, I love pancakes in the morning. It's, it's really delicious or actually, honestly, I'm on breakfast any time of day. <laughs> yes. I'm Celeste, I'm right there with you. Every Sunday, I eat breakfast all five meals. Do you? I do. That's Except for my so popcorn. Cute. Yeah, well, of course. You've got to have your popcorn. <laughs> yeah. That's so awesome. Well, this I love the way you can do it. Yeah, there are so many things that you can do. And also, like, this lifestyle, what I, I love is, like, when you challenge misconceptions whether they're your own or others that it's like super restrictive and it's not fun like that's not at all the case you can make it so amazing and, and you can feel really good and I think too coming from an athletic background there's that like hunger and drive that's always within you yes, to be better always. Mm -hmm. like and you were saying even... before we recorded like you don't know how to not take things seriously Yes. You know, it's a good and a bad thing, of course, you know, because you, you don't want to be, you know, have your foot on the throttle all the time. And I'm not good at letting the gas off. I, I, and that's something for me I have to work on because we all have, you know, weaknesses, strengths or things we got to work on. And me, I need to take my foot off the gas you know, and pump the brakes a little bit, which I'm still a work in progress, you know? Don't be it's so serious, you know, 24-7, you know? Sometimes relax a little bit, enjoy. I mean, I do, like I go with my friends on trips. I have a, girl, a group of girls I, I travel with and we do a girlfriend's trip every year. And I'm usually dieting on prep and they're not. And they've accepted that. They're like, whatever. And I bring my containers, you know, and they just accept that that's what's going on. They don't even ask me any questions. We just roll. They go, well, we're going to go eat Mexican. I'm going to make Mexican food so I can eat Mexican with you. Okay, let's cook. That's cool. I like that idea. Oh, yes. I love that. It's, it's nice that when you can let go a bit too and you realize like, it's fine. Nothing happened. I am totally okay still you know because sometimes mm -hmm. we question whether or not that it is going to be fine but it is definitely well I think it's really great that you are able to live that lifestyle still pursue the things that you enjoy like the travel and obviously you have this passion for teaching and for coaching but you also started working for pro physiques as a coach and teaching other people how to live this lifestyle so like what does your maybe coaching philosophy look like in alignment with theirs or is it different? Do you do your own, like, do you take your own approach? Like, how does that work? Well, as you know, we're flexible dieters. And so that's the biggest approach, which I have completely embraced. And so I want to teach as many people how to enjoy their life, but achieve their goals by eating by an eating lifestyle as opposed to dieting when I'm, you know, I tell my students, there's a difference between a lifestyle change and a dieting. When I diet, I'm doing it for a specific reason, like a show, mm. but I want to teach you how to live a lifestyle so that when you're 50, you know what to do and you know how to eat and you don't, you can eat and enjoy life as opposed to being a restrictive dieter. I said, when I'm doing a show, it's different. You've seen me. I'm restrictive. I only eat it, cer eat certain things for certain time. And then I've got to do all this certain stuff, but I want to teach my clients how to live the lifestyle as opposed to, Oh, I can't have rice. I can't have potatoes. I want them to flip that script and say, I can have this, I can have that. This makes me feel good. Yes. This makes me happy because I feel that way. When I eat, I pose my pictures. Ooh, and I like, oh, I had this dessert. And, and Lexi and I go back and forth about different things that she makes and I'd I copy and Lexi. imitate. So I want my clients to know that aspect and in, how to enjoy life, even though you're, 
trying to lose or gain weight, depending on what your goals are. I love that so much. And that's how we sustain our progress because we actually enjoy it then. Right, right. Amazing. And when it comes to competing, you've stepped on stage many times and you are you compete as a master's competitor. So how did you decide to do master's and not open? And what are like the pros and cons to this for maybe others to be considering? Well, let me tell you, I did the open. I would do open and do master's for a while I did that. And I realized that they're not going to pick me <laughs> because they've seen me so much. They know that I'm 57 or 55 or 54, or whatever age I was. And they're just not, I, I had to be honest with myself. I need to stay in my own lane. Yeah, you know, yeah, and it made me more successful when I wasn't stressed about. I got to get back on stage and do open. I got to get back on stage and do masters. I got to go back and do finals. When I chose um, two years ago to just stick to just masters, things changed. I, I've done better. I've been more successful. I'm a little more focused. I'm not worried about whether I'm going to beat somebody like a Jordan or you know Ashley K. Fit because they're I'm I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm 20 years older, 25 years older, and it's it's a different category, you know, and Sandy uh, Williamson and I had a long talk about it. And she says, you know, Miriam, you're just this is where you are in life. So I had to embrace that. Oh, I love that. Did you have any like sadness in deciding only to do masters or did it feel like a relief? It was, it was almost a relief because I went, I, I was at one of the Tampa pro shows and I didn't want to go back on stage in the open category. And I was talking to one of the expediters and, um, he said, Miriam, you went on for prejudging. You have to go on for finals. He goes, unless from now on you can choose to not do open. And once him and I had that discussion, discussion, I said, you know what? Today will be the last day I do open. And he goes, are you sure? I said, yes. Because it just, I was, de I was devastated knowing that, oh yeah, you're in third call outs or fourth call outs. Yeah. And even it didn't matter that they're 20 and I'm 50. I still didn't like that feeling of Absolutely. you're almost last. <laughs> well, that's that competitor. Like that's that athlete yes. in you because you like that pedal to the metal and like pushing yourself and you know how hard you work. You want to succeed. Now, actually, if they did a master's Olympia, would you hope to compete? Because I know they've been throwing that around. Well, the rumor is it's <laughs> August 25th through the 27th in Romania. Oh, shoot. That's so freaking by, cool. By April 23rd, you have to have your application in if you plan on attending. Oh. So, attending or competing? Competing. Interesting. So I... I honestly want to do it, but it's going to be costly. So I'm not sure how I'm going to raise the money, find support financially to go over. Cause I'm going to have to go early because I don't know. The flight is like 12 hours. I've already looked some stuff up, you know, I talked to my friend who's Romanian and she tells me I would totally love it and that I should do it. But that's, it's underneath um, on Instagram, uh, Masters Olympia, LLC. It's already, it's, it's oh, in the plan. Well, I'm glad we're talking about this. I mean, this episode's coming out in February, but by the time people hear it, then they better get their booties excited and ready. That's yes. freaking awesome to hear. Yes, I'm, I'm excited. I just wish it was a little bit closer, but... You know, and I'm not sure what made them choose that particular country. I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah. Why? I, I don't know why either. I, I don't know that. Don't tell me they're going to charge masters though to compete. Are they? 
I don't know. Uh, the only promoter who right now at this moment not charging masters will be Joe yeah. Pascula. Yeah, that's why that's one of the big reasons why I had him on the podcast was to highlight that commitment, which I think is really cool. So I'm hoping to do uh, two to three of his shows because I, I didn't think that was fair to us. Right. Because well, you're going to charge me more than an NPC competitor. Mm -hmm. Just so, so you guys can get prize money. I don't understand. Yes, that. it's it's weird. It was weird. It <laughs> I mean, I I don't have too many complaints because this year I did get most of my money back. Yeah. But why am I paying though? Right, right. Because the um, other in the open division, that's not happening. They're just making the money based on amateur um, registrations and sponsors and things like that. Right, correct. So when you go into like your day to day life, you clearly function a lot off of routine. And this is something that's supported you. And I think part of the lifestyle for masters is not just that you know, you've established a lifestyle, you're probably a bit more secure and everything like that. But the age factor brings things like hormones into consideration, or maybe other special considerations. So what are the ways that you've felt your age maybe affect your approach or your process, your routine, your journey? Well, I do notice that things ache a little more and a little differently. So you have to make adjustments training wise. Um, I do get my hormones checked uh, every when I go on my first diet, when I start prepping and when I come off. So I do take care of that every year. Mm -hmm. um, one of my friends who is a figure competitor also, um, she takes care of me. Thank you. Good. Thank goodness. Aww. Miss Lena. And uh, otherwise, uh, you know, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't be as successful without some of those people. Um, I do get my, I have chiropractic work done. Uh, what, I, when I'm getting close to a show, I tend to spread it out, but at least one to two times a month, that's like a necessity. Um, I also get a massage by my friend who's a physique competitor um, once a month. <laughs> Also, wow. sometimes every two to three weeks. And my chiropractor, his wife is a WBFF pro. That's awesome. And he does all of her nutrition and training. So he's all the people that are in my circle that really help me get to where I'm getting um, are all in the bodybuilding world. Don't you love that? Because they just yes. get it. They understand and they know how you're supposed to look. They understand what needs to be changed, how to make it work for you, you know, so that makes it a lot easier. Absolutely. To get things like, done. Yes. And when you, especially I think for like recovery methods, it makes a big difference because they understand, like, I, I remember I have the massage therapists I've worked with understood bodybuilding. So they knew like the types of posing I have to do and how that will look on stage and like what not to do before going into a show. So like when right. someone understands that, it's like, oh, thank goodness. I don't have to explain it much. Like when people shameless plug here, but much like when people work, work with me and they reach out to work with me for the mental health side of things, they're like, I like that I don't have to explain anything to you. And I'm like, exactly. You know, it's really yeah. nice. It is. It makes life a little bit easier. And then you, you're you more relaxed. And then there's a trust factor. Because if you go to somebody new, they don't understand. And then you have to build a relationship. And once you've built a relationship, as we all know, the relationship, the bond, then you have trust. Yes trust with others and I think too sometimes our ability to build trust with others comes from a trust within ourselves and being able to commit and show up for ourselves over and over again allows us to then like really seek out people who will do that for us too right yes yes I love that <laughs> and you know, when you go about this journey, we usually do face challenges or obstacles. So it's nice to have a group of people too in those situations who we can lean on. But did you face any challenges that ever made you question if 
you should keep going or if this is it for you? Right now, um, well, people do ask me how long I'm going to do this, but they're not the people that are in my circle. Mm-hmm. Right. You like, know, how long are you going to track your food for? Do all this silly stuff? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, somebody asked me that the other day at work, and I said, probably forever. Yeah. I said, now I'm not going to be as meticulous, probably if I leave the bodybuilding world, but it'll probably be on the radar. I'll probably be intuitive eating, but the macros will still be in my head because it's something that I've gotten accustomed to and I actually enjoy tracking. I went, we have a popcorn store in Claremont, which is a city about 30 minutes from me. And um, it used to be where I used to ride my bike in Winter Garden, but they moved to Claremont. I went in there after I left Miss Lena after getting my my physical for my hormones checked. I stopped in the popcorn store. We sat in there for an hour tracking the macros on like five or six different popcorns. <laughs> it was hilarious. And she goes, I didn't know that popcorn had calories. I was like, how do you not know? Golly. How do you not know? You know, she goes, well, we put this much oil. So we were calculating it, putting it in the computer, trying to figure out how many calories, you know, the cheesy buffalo had compared to the ranch buffalo. And it was pretty funny. It was pretty yes, funny. I love that. It's so much, um, it's so much cooler to do that with other people too, and be able to show that lifestyle. And I actually sometimes wonder why more restaurants and mom and pop shops don't have those things. Cause I feel like if you're budgeting for like the amount of food you need and the amount of materials or supplies you need to make it, like you could, you like, you'd need to be measuring it. You know what I'm saying? So it yeah. surprises me there's not more restaurants and mom and pop shops with the nutrition information. That's funny, Mesh. I didn't even think about that because, you know, the big the big restaurants have them, even though they're not 100% correct, of course, but yeah. nothing is. But they do have them because like Chipotle is up here up the street from me and I could go online and get all the macros if I wanted to eat something there. Mm-hmm. But if I went to, there's a cute little restaurant up the street that I keep saying I'm going to try. But when I look at the menu, I don't know what's on there. So I don't know what it is. So it just like freaks me out. If I'm going to eat off plan, I just eat off plan. I don't even look at the macros. Yeah. That's kind because, of like the letting it go for a little bit. Yes. I, and I, that's the, the part that I got to do better with is just... <laughs> Okay, I'm going to have, I did it for my birthday, so I know I can do it. I just like freak out a little bit. Like, I didn't track that. Oh, no. Is that good? What's going to happen? So I, I got to learn how to do that. Yeah, well, I think that's a great goal to have, especially in an improvement season. Yes. And this will be, even though Coach Paul and I have agreed, I'm going to stay closer to my stage weight than I ever have. Because as you get older, it's harder to build muscle. You know, back to that question. It's harder to build muscle because you've already got it. Exactly. So the older I get, I'm a, a mature lifter. I've been lifting since I was 18. So I'm a mature lifter. And to build muscle is like difficult. If I was a newbie lifter, I, I, I could gain a lot more muscle. Yeah, but I'm not, exactly. I'm not new. My goal is to maintain what I got. If I can get a pound, a pound and a half in the off season, yay. Yeah. And that's, that is honestly something that I think is difficult for competitors to accept is that like the muscle mass gained isn't always this dramatic, like three pounds every improvement season. Sometimes it, it isn't, especially as you get older too. And um, how have you been able to progress and time your shows? Cause you've pretty much competed every single year. So how do you time those um, improvement seasons and preps and make sure they're really productive for you and your goals? Well, coach Paul um, makes us stay off the stage as long as we're on the stage. So if you're on stage for six months, you're off for at least six months, maybe eight. So I didn't get on stage, well, 2022 until June, which is a little bit, 
is a month actually earlier than normal. And I, I, I felt like I wasn't quite ready, but we used it as a preparation for masters. And then I came off in October and I'm not going back on stage or I will not be in the dieting phase until probably February or March. And that may not even be, it could be April. So, wow. So that's kind of and, how you do it is like the amount of time on will end up being the, the amount, amount of time off. Nice. That's for and recovery. Recovery and to build and to refresh your brain, you, you, uh, which once again, I'm still working on, you know, relax a little bit, enjoy life a little bit more, mm -hmm. um, you know, because I feel like I enjoy what I'm doing. So I don't really feel like I have to be off. But mm -hmm. It does help, uh, I, you know, it does help to be able to go somewhere and not be going, where's my, my fitness pal? I got to look at what am I supposed to eat? You know, well, it does help to not to be off live, that. Yes. And part of why we live this lifestyle is so we can like trust ourselves and we can enjoy, like we have more knowledge and experience than the majority of the population. And yet so many of us don't let ourselves be free and experience Right. And, utilize that knowledge to to allow for some more flexibility because we actually have insight whereas most of the population does does not have the same level of insight I should say correct correct and I could go to a restaurant and kind of I already know kind of what the calories are so I could do it I just sometimes I sometimes I just don't like to I'd rather write it down <laughs> yeah totally and it, it does just become a habit again, you know, yes. like so many of this is just habitual. So it's like how we perceive it is really what matters. Right. So now, I'm, 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 a, I'm a work in progress. I'm going to get it down. Aren't we all? <laughs> but, you know, it's really cool that you've got your approach and you have done this for a while, done this a lot. You still, you still identify areas for growth, which is awesome. And I was wondering how, your outlook on your body and this sport or maybe just approaching life in general has maybe evolved or changed throughout the seasons you've done well i i think i feel like i have the body composition i have like i told coach paul the other day i really like how i'm looking right now mm. this is probably the i feel the best start of an off season physique that I've ever had yet. Cause I still look like I could step on stage in about three weeks. Yeah. And Even though I would not do that, but I feel yeah. like I could, but I really, <laughs> uh, I'm happy with the, the calories. I'm happy with the training protocol. And, but before I would like, oh, I'm off and I would just dump into being completely off and then trying to retrain myself to get back on. But I feel like I'm, I'm off, but I'm, I have a little bit of my foot is in there still, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but I'm off. So I kind of leave, I guess the door cracked yeah. so that I'm not closed and only in the off season or the building season. Absolutely. And I know some, some people have asked me, when are you going to take a year off at this age, taking a year off is, isn't going to really give me much more than what I'm doing now. Hmm. So yeah. if I was 25, I would take a year, maybe even two to That's build right now. <laughs> yeah. So when you're younger, it makes more sense. When you get older, it's you, you've got this time frame, and it's almost like, you know how they talk about your, um, your hormones are raging and your mm. it's baby time. And it, it's kind of similar to me in my head. Cause I don't have any children, but I feel like this is the time that I can do it before I, I, I lose that time. Mm. Because you right. only got so much time there's, and there's a few competitors like Janine and Janet yes. and Shelly, yes. Helene, they yes. are all 60 and they look amazing. amazing. So I know at 60, I can look amazing too, just like them. 
But after that, I don't know, because no one's gone that far. I mean, there is Dr. Um, Josefina, who's like 60-something, 70-something. And then there's the one other lady that's a bodybuilder. I can't think of her name right Renee now. Renee Landers? No, it's... Uh, ooh. Gosh. Her sister passed away from cancer. And they were on this fitness journey. She's a black lady. Uh, oh. Ooh. I can't think of her name. I know who you're talking about. Gosh. But, you know, it, it's doable. You don't have to be as extreme as we are right now. But it, yeah. you can maintain it. That's right. And it's like, <laughs> like you said, when people ask how long you're going to do this for, it's like, forever I love this I stayed or not like this is the lifestyle I'm choosing to live and like I'm choosing to live this at well I started choosing to live this a very long time ago but I'm continuing to live this now at 26 because I value it and it's part of me and I'm sure it'll it will evolve as my life stages change and things evolve with me but at the end of the day like I value this so much as do you and you're seeing like you have that fire in you. You're excited about this. It's like, why not utilize that? Right, exactly. Use what you have. And then when things change, evolve, then you're, I'm going to change and evolve. Mm -hmm. Because at some point, you know, I'm going to retire from teaching. So that's going to change my lifestyle. So, you know, then when that happens, then we adjust. Exactly. Now, do you have any favorite experiences or maybe um, like good memories or or even lessons that you've learned, like that really stand out to you? You know, th- this year probably was probably one of the harder preps I've ever I've had in a long time because I had to learn um, new eating habits because of my digestion. And there were foods I had to take out, which we talked about food sensitivity And that I had to manipulate around that all year. And I never had to do that before. Um, I spent a lot more time traveling away. And I don't know if that was good or bad. That could have hurt me a little bit, I think. Um, And then just trying to lock in your finances for, you know, deciding what shows to do and learning what your budget is. Mm-hmm. I also this um, this year, well, I started last year doing my own makeup. And um, I would love to continue that process and do makeup for other competitors. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. For, for shows, yeah. Because I, I once I learned how to do it, I'm like, oh, this is so much more relaxing. I could do my own makeup and I don't have to rush. Now that I'm going to learn how to tan myself, that might be the next crossing off li- off the list. <laughs> yeah. Well, tanning, I think, is very easy. The DIY tanning. You get to practice it for the fashion show. I do. I've never done it yet. So I, I'm, uh, now that I'm really nervous about. <laughs> it's super easy. If you need any help, reach out because I got you. And, um, I can assure you that it won't be a problem. Um, and I actually find the DIY tan like sits on the skin very easily. So there's less like P mistakes, you know what I'm saying? And then they're easy to buff out. Okay. Yeah. But if you need any help and plus, um, I know like Alyssa with pro tan, me and her did an episode, so that might be helpful, but also like you could also reach out to her and she's very helpful. As a listener of Confessions of a Bikini Pro podcast, you can receive 20% off at ProTanUSA.com by using the code CELESTE at checkout. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited about it because I got it out, sitting out, ready to rock and roll. I've been doing my exfoliation. Oh, shoot. I forgot about, I didn't even think about that. Oh, no. Well, it's okay. Let's I have get, a huge bottle of Get Buff, so I need to use that. Yep. I, I put, posted a uh, picture yesterday to my squad. Let's get this party started. Oh, my gosh, girl. I'm so glad you mentioned that because I was like, 
Oh, shoot. I forgot you had to exfoliate and do all the things. So, yeah. yeah. Um, well, that is uh, really cool that you've, you know, you've kind of taken what you've learned through this process as hard of a prep as it was. You have things now that you want to even turn into potentially new passions or other passions, which is really, really special. And something cool about this industry is we can always grow in it, which I just yes. love and appreciate. I do too. And I think despite some of those little pitfalls, this has been an amazing year. I mean, the opportunity to be sponsored by Angel Competition Bikinis. Yeah. I mean, I, I told my friend, my best friend at the beginning of the year, I said, I this year I want to be sponsored by somebody. I said, I've earned that opportunity. And when Deborah came to me at Masters Nationals, mm -hmm. I was like, I was in tears. Like, are you serious? And that just made me, I mean, I've been overwhelmed with the ladies at um, Angel Competition. I mean, they're so good. When my suit didn't fit, they sent me a brand new one that fits 100% better. Wow, that's really good. Yeah. I'm glad you're taking care of you. I, I, and I feel like back to being on stage and being in, in the open category. And they're like, you're a master's girl. You don't, you're not important in the open. Oh. And now I feel like they're really, um, the NBC and the IFBB is giving the masters, even though they charged us this year, they're giving us a lot more credit because we're pretty doggone good. <laughs> you think you guys are freaking amazing and it's growing yeah. Because of you guys, like um, the master's division is growing because you're setting that example of what's possible. And this goes back to your very first point about empowering women. Like, yes, there's so much beauty and power in you guys showing up and and doing this because it allows other women to see and it even allows competitors like myself who are in their 20s who love I love stepping next on stage next to masters because you guys just a freaking bomb and then I'm inspired because I'm like I want to keep doing that you know so I think it's wonderful when there's spotlight on masters competitors and I'm glad that Angel saw your value and wanted to sponsor you too. Yes, and I'm so appreciative of that. This mm -hmm. and this ain't this fashion show is like the the accumulation of how my year has been. Even though there's some been some ups and downs, this is one positive thing that's gonna overshine everything. Aww. It doesn't matter that I struggled, didn't do this or didn't do that, or I missed this opportunity. This is the accumulation of everything, and I'm I'm super excited. I am so excited to meet you there, um, especially just because this, when I was prepping the episode, like I told you, I had so much fun, but now like talking with you, I'm like, this woman's awesome, like super amazing, just your energy. And you don't even know, right now I'm dancing, Celeste. Oh my God, you're so cute. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Well, I love to wrap up the episodes by getting best advice. So can you share what your best advice would be for someone who has never competed before, but would like to, and then your best advice for someone on their road to pro? Well, I tell you, whichever way you choose to do it, I always say pick one thing first and get good at that one thing and then mm -hmm. go to the next step. So if you're an amateur, be your best amateur. Be the best amateur. Be, you want that pro-like experience even though you're an amateur. And then once you, once I turn pro, I realize, enjoy the, the experience. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the process. Enjoy the people around you. And the key word is enjoy. Because if you're not enjoying it, it's not worth doing. That's right. And that goes... Even with, it doesn't matter what you do in life. If the job that you have, you don't enjoy it, it's time to find something new. You want to enjoy what you do and have fun with it. Wonderful. I love that advice so much. And I like how you said, doesn't matter where you're at, like focus on where you're at and enjoy it and have fun and make the most of that part of your journey. Yeah, because if you're constantly thinking about going somewhere else, you can't enjoy what's going on right now. Exactly. So, 
And then you're always thinking about the next, the next, the next, rather than yes, look at what I've already yep. done. Yep. And then you miss the opportunity to enjoy what you've, what you've accomplished so far. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, I would love for everybody to be able to follow up with you, maybe even work with you or just continue to follow your journey. So can you let everybody know where they can find you or even inquire about coaching? Uh, if you go onto the Pro Physique uh, website, you can click on me and I could be your coach, your nu nutrition consultant or your training consultant. I'm also on um, Instagram at Miriam Jenkins IFBB Pro. What, what? What, what? <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I'll make sure that's in the show notes. I do so appreciate your time, your energy, and for being here, even despite not feeling your best. I cannot wait to see you next week. And again, just thank you so much for your time. Yes, I'm going to make sure that I am un... Uh, this is all cleared up by next <laughs> week. So time to take drink some tea. Yes, absolutely. And to everybody listening, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day, night, or morning, wherever you are in the world where you listen to this episode.